Well, good afternoon, or good, good morning, rather. Welcome. Thank you all for sharing your very valuable time with us today. We have professional staff, we have citizens, we have political candidates, we have dignitaries. Uh, we're all smiles today because this is a dream, 16 years in the making, finally coming true. Uh, it's good for the town of Clarksville and it's good for our region. Uh, and before I get to that, I do want to make some, uh, some welcomes to our dignitaries. I want to recognize uh, representing uh, U.S. Senator Todd Young's office, uh, Ms. Melissa Acton, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to thank our state senator, uh, state representative, rather, Ms. Rita Fleming. There you are. Thank you for your time, Ms. Fleming, Dr. Fleming. Uh, and I want to recognize our town council members present, uh, Mr. Tim Halber, vice president of Clarksville Town Council. And then we have two council members also serving as uh, fellow commissioners with me on the Redevelopment Commission, which uh, is overseeing this project. Uh, we have Ms. Jennifer Voiner. Vice President of Redevelopment and the Secretary of our Town Council, and Mr. John Gilkey, also with the Commission and Council. Uh, thank you so much for all being here. Uh, this is a momentous occasion uh, because we're doing something uh, that's more than just repurposing uh, abandoned railway. Uh, yes, we're, we're finding a higher and better use, uh, improving quality of life, with uh, a two-mile trail system and a system we hope will eventually connect all of our neighborhoods to the riverfront and to an eventual 400-acre park. Uh, but it's more than just that. We're also laying the groundwork here today uh, for pre preparing for the next 50 years of li living uh, in urban environment. Uh, you know, the whole American story is one of governments pivoting their vision uh, in response to uh, human technology improvements. Uh, and just as the horse gave way to the steam engine, the steam engine gave way to the auto and airline industries, today we are now giving way to 5G technology and what the, potentially uh, driverless self-driving cars. Uh, and with that, uh, we here at the town of Clarksville are looking ahead to the next 50 and 100 years where we build communities uh, that are uh, more sustainable, uh, to uh, changes in economy with mixed-use developments and with more connectivity, uh, not just to jobs, but to amenities and quality-of-life locations. Uh, so with that, thank you for being here. This is more than just a rails-to-trails project when we take it under that, that lens. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, uh, introduce our first speaker, who I'm, I'm very glad is not the first time here to Clarksville. Our next speaker uh, joined us. Uh, most recently at a very special event at the Falls of the Ohio. <clears throat> and uh, this gentleman is representing uh, today the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, this project is uh, significantly funded uh, through uh, the Next Level Trails grant program. And we're thankful to DNR and to the governor's office for making uh, those, that uh, grant program available. And to tell you more, I'm very happy to present to you Mr. Cam Clark. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be back down here. A um, little warmer weather. It was pretty cold in May when we were down here. Um, so last summer, Governor Holcomb came to some of us at DNR uh, looking for uh, big ideas of how to invest in trails in uh, the state of Indiana. And at the time, we didn't know what he meant by big, but as it turned out, it was $90 million big. And um, that's, that's by far the biggest investment that uh, states ever made in trails uh, in the state's history. And um, it's great to be here today as we celebrate one of those investments. But what came of that big idea uh, was the Next Level Trails program, as, uh, as you all know. And that program was put, was put together by a lot of people, including a number of trail stakeholders uh, from throughout the state. And one of the ideas that came from that collaboration was to take that $90 million and break it up into two pots. $70 million was going to go into one pot to help fund trail development of, of regional significance that connected multiple towns or multiple counties. And the other 20 went into a pot to help fund development of trails of more local significance, much like the Clarksville Discovery Trail. And 
we broke it into three rounds. And that first round, 25 million of the 90 was going to be available. And, and we knew the response would be great. We didn't know how great. 82 applications were received uh, that first go round, and that was about twice what we were expecting. Um, and if a little, if I could, uh, some statistics about those 82. If all 82 of those projects would have been funded and developed, they would have resulted in another 240 miles of trails throughout 42 different counties. All told, they were seeking an additional 144 million dollars in funding. Um, all vying for that $25 million first round pot. Of those 82, there were 17 really stood out. 17 applications were awarded the first round grants. And one more statistic for you. Those 17, on average, brought in a match of 50%. So what that means is we've leveraged the first $25 million into $37.5 million into trail development. And, and that, two significant things about that. One is, that's what the governor really was hoping to see, that community is getting behind their projects. And the other part of it was more investment in trails. It showed him, showed everybody else, how important trails were to communities. This project really stood out amongst those 17. It brought with it components that hit some really key elements of the Next Level Trails program, you know, starting with partnerships. Um, important to the governor was how a applicant was able to leverage partnerships throughout a community. And with this one, we, you know, you had the Clarksville Redevelopment Commission, the Southern Indiana Tourism Bureaus, um, Silver Creek Sand and Gravel, of course, today's host, Duke Energy, and others all came together to make this project a reality. And the investment your community has put into this project, uh, it, it brought with it a 65% match. Now, mind you, to qualify, you needed a 20%. And that 65% match of your project was among the highest, if not the highest, of all 82 projects that came in. Another key element is connections. You heard me say it earlier, but... The governor wanted to see how these projects could connect people, could connect communities. This project, uh, you know, cross town connections, you're going to bring people, parks, schools, commercial districts, and connect them all with the Ohio River Greenway. And soon uh, people will be able to safely walk and bike from here to their favorite park, uh, to Jefferson, Jeffersonville, New Albany, and even into Louisville. And the other thing that this project brought, and I knew this, you know, this was a project that was years in the making. I didn't realize it was 16 years in the making until just this morning, um, but it was truly shovel ready. Um, it, it, the accelerated timeline aspect of this was also important. Uh, the governor wanted to see these investments on the ground and people using them as soon as possible. And this is obviously ready to go, and if all goes as planned, People in this community will be able to walk and bike on this trail as early as um, early 2020. Uh, so congratulations on behalf of the governor and the Department of Natural Resources for such an excellent project. We're delighted to be here today, and we're delighted to stick a shovel in the ground. And uh, I know there's other speakers, but I'm eager to get started. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Clark. As he mentioned, uh, shovel-ready, 65% match. Um, that would not be possible without our uh, very professional staff here at Clarksville. And I do want to take a moment to recognize uh, our three-man team that <clears throat> it makes most of our redevelopment uh, visions possible. Uh, Director Dylan Fisher, thank you uh, for your tireless effort in implementing uh, the visions of the Council and Commission. And with great assistance from Town Manager Kevin Beatty, thank you, Kevin. We're thankful to have all of your experience to assist us in navigating these uh, great endeavors. And we can't forget our redevelopment associate, a new and recent hire, 
Mr. Nick Langford, who wrote the grant application for Next Level Trails. So needless to say, without that application, we wouldn't be doing this today. So thank you, sir. With that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, a gentleman who uh, has been a pleasure to work with as an ex-official member of our Redevelopment Commission uh, and is tirelessly serving our town and doesn't know the meaning of retirement uh, he uh, is uh, the chair of uh, Clarksville Schools uh, School Board. Uh, he's the chair of our Parks District Board. And he's uh, here today to tell you a little bit more about this project from Clarksville Parks' perspective. Uh, please welcome Mr. Bill Wilson. Well, first of all, on behalf of the... Uh, Clarksville Parks and Recreation, we are very appreciative of the support and the cooperation of the various groups and organizations, most of which have already been mentioned. We would like to thank the governor for the new uh, Next Trail initiative. That, that was fantastic. And uh, to be able to be a part of that on the initial round, thank you. Hope you will relay that information. We're very appreciative. I would also like to thank the DNR, uh, the uh, uh, Clarksville Redevelopment Commission. Uh, they've done a great job. Town of Clarksville, Southern Indiana Tourism Bureau. Appreciate all of their support. Uh, I would also like to thank Jacoby Toombs Lance and uh, Mac Construction for stepping up and going to uh, take care of this project. Uh, those groups that I just mentioned, and many others, and we've been at it, yes, 16 years. And I live right over there, so I'm well aware of all of this, okay? And uh, it's a long process, but it will provide uh, safe routes for schools, and I am president of the school board. It will also provide access to local retailers, connections to other uh Local businesses, connectivity, I hear that term over and over again, and that is, that's very true. We did a survey, this is the parks, we did a survey of the various activities that our community were involved in, and also things that they would like to see. Overwhelmingly, it was trails and that connectivity. It was overwhelming. And to just give you an emphasis, when the Greenway was opened up recently in the connections that we've made, the number of people, bicycles, pedestrians, that use that trail and will continue to use the rest of the trails as we continue throughout the state also, was enormous. The participation was fantastic. And I, I think, as you alluded to, uh, AD, uh, quality of life, and that's what people want. They want to be able to get out. They want to be able to be connected. They don't always want to have to drive places, and, and it's much better for the community. So for all of that, from the parks, thank you very much, each one of you, for participating and being involved. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, and as already mentioned, this is a true uh, partnership in every respect. Local government, state government, working with our parks, working also with uh, uh, Duke Energy as well. I want to thank Ms. Lisa Huber for hosting us here. The uh, ground under your feet, uh, which owns owned by Duke Energy, will eventually be uh, become a trailhead as a part of this system, uh, thanks to Elise agreement that they have agreed to. So we want to recognize them as one of our many partners in this project. And another partner, as mentioned, is our own Southern Indiana Tourism Bureau. And I'm glad to have the director of that, Mr. Jim Epperson, who I know uh, is working, I think, 24-7 promoting uh, the greater Louisville area and especially the communities here in southeast in Indiana. So with that, uh, I'd like to introduce you for a few words, Mr. Jim Epperson.
there's a mantra that we follow. If you build a place that people want to visit, you build a place where people want to live. If you build a place where people want to live, you build a place where people have to work. If you build a place where people want to work, you build a place that, that business has to be. And if you build a place that, that business has to be, you're back to building a place that people want to visit, come back to again. Southern Indiana Tourism is the destination marketing organization for Clark and Floyd counties. Most of what we do, our residents don't see because we're, we're doing marketing activities in outer markets, bringing people to the community. We hope they, they see the result of that in increased visitors. But we have a, a very tangible uh, program that 25% of our funding is dedicated to. It's a tourism capital development fund. And the purpose of that fund is to enter into partnerships with our municipalities to fund projects that our board approves. And the, the, the two key things about those projects is that they have to be transformative and they have to enhance the experiences for visitors, which in turn enhances the quality of place and quality of life of residents. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. Residents and visitors should commingle, and they do commingle. Uh, and, and it's not just the, Im the economic impact of the visitor coming to the community and leaving, it's that social exchange um, and, and giving that visitor a real sense of who we are, and that's the memories that, that people take back. So, so we're pleased to, to have this program uh, be uh, a funding source for this project and many others. Since it was formed in 1986, we funded a little over $7 million in projects. Um, the board just awarded uh, a, another round yesterday, and we're going to be doing releases about that. And that'll take our total uh, well above $8 million. Um, and so, uh, so this, this, is, this was a no-brainer. This was a high-scoring project. Um, as the budget committee uh, scored it and it went to the board um, because it, it, like Cam said, it ticks, ticks all the boxes. It, it enhances that experience uh, for visitors who are using the Greenway, who are going to be experiencing in the future uh, the Grand Park at River Heritage Conservancy and, and the connectivity into town. It, it, there's, there's so many things that, about this type of project that just fit with what we're trying to do to build the destination and promote it at the same time. So thank you all for the opportunity to be a partner, and uh, thanks to all of you for being here today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Epperson. <clears throat> this project also would not be possible uh, without uh, the vision of our local officials. I want to recognize uh, our commissioners as well as our council members who came together in a bipartisan spirit uh, three years ago uh, to put on the front burner this project. Uh, now, this project, as you may have heard, was envisioned by previous administrations as many as 16 years ago and put on the list, uh, but not until three years ago was it really made a priority, at which point our professional staff uh, worked very hard to acquire the land needed for this project uh, and worked very hard to avoid any use of eminent domain, for which I give them great credit. And so with that, uh, I want to thank our council and our commission for making it a priority because we know this project will launch many more projects. And finally, as we uh, turn the dirt today, I hope you all will join me in celebrating that the Rails to Trails movement truly is a unique Midwestern-led movement. And forgive me, I'm a lover of history, so very briefly... Uh, in 1967, the first Rails to Trails project in Wisconsin, the Elroy Sparta State Trail, was initiated, soon followed by the Illinois Prairie Path in 1968. And this movement culminated in 1986 with the establishment of the Rails to Trails Conservancy in D.C. As this uh, movement picked up steam, uh, a Supreme Court ruling also bolstered the movement in 1990 which allowed the using of land-banked railways by the federal government for temporary trails. Fast forward to 2000, and Clarksville decided to put this on the list as a part of future vision. So here we are, years later, finally getting it done, and I want to thank the council and commission for putting it on the front burner. Thank you. Well, with that, that concludes our uh, formal speaking ceremony. And uh, shortly here, we're going to... Uh, get the uh, shovels out ready, and we hope you will join us for uh, that session uh, for photo opportunities. Uh, and with that, I want to thank you so much for your time. 
And I hope you will uh, spread the word about this exciting project. And I hope you will bike it and walk it and run it. So with that, thank you. We hope you have a lovely day.